Welcome everybody. I'm here with Dr. Denise Warden, who's one of my favorite people now. You may have seen my interview with her on Gaia TV, where I did a suite of shows on the subject of cancer and alternative means of um, managing cancer. And Denise just has a brilliant point of view. She was on, uh, I think we paired her up with D Dominique D'Agostano and also uh, Trevor Christofferson, right? Yes. And, yes. Travis and Dominic, yes. good friends and great. That's great. Yeah. 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 And uh, anyway, that was a really, really informative series. But Denise researches until three in the morning, almost every night. Uh, so I am told. <laughs> not by you. have already told you. <laughs> I think your husband talks about that, but in any event, yeah, yeah. Um, you're always on the cutting edge of everything, all the way from cancer to non-invasive ways to just kind of keep your um, longevity going and even youthful beauty well into your life. So we're going to talk about an, a variety of subjects with Denise. Um, in these little bite-sized pieces we're calling health bites, just little five, 10 minute pieces. And today we're going to kick it off with digestion because Denise, everybody's digestion is messed up you take it and a because that's right because health begins in the gut you know you hear that a lot but now we're learning more and more about it and so we're you're hearing the term microbiome everybody's talking about the microbiome but i think we need to just to define a couple of things you know there's the bugs and then the microbiome includes the bugs and the bugs genes their genes not ours their genes and all of their genetic pathways. So that genome, which means all their DNA. So that whole community of bugs is an area of great interest of research right now. And the more we find out, the more we realize it's related to everything as far as health is concerned. Well, let's go ahead, let's dive into it because it's uh, an area of research. My understanding is a lot of the original research was happening through the medical community in the Ukraine initially. Am I correct on that? That That's correct. Well, you know, the Russians and the Germans and the Europeans, sometimes they're ahead of us. They really go into the science. They're not about, oh, can I make um, a drug out of this immediately? And if they can't, they say, that's still okay. We want to we want to look at the um, the right thing to do and to research it. So yes, um, many much of this and still a lot of the most interesting that we're getting is still out of Russia. It really is of this information still. Um, the microbiome, though, just for basic, Regina, 200 trillion cells in it, right? And there's more than a thousand different species. I mean, this is a big thing we're talking about. It's just not a couple of bugs, like what you see on your probiotics. And it's 15 times larger than our entire genome. So in other words, there's more genes and more bugs, those genes, than our genes. We're only a little piece of what we consider us our DNA and our human cells is very little. So I tell my patients, you really are a bunch of bugs. We really are. And we better learn how to treat those bugs correctly if we want to be healthy. Absolutely. Well, I would assume there has to be some kind of assessment process to find out how your microbiome is working with the foods you're putting in the body, stresses, toxins, and so forth, to determine how you can keep yourself healthy. Right. We don't have great tests right now. We just know that when someone has digestive issues, that microbiome is going to be a part of it. We know it affects our immune system. We know it affects our brain and how it works. We know it balances our hormones. It actually can help make um, a good bug, help balance the good bugs, bad bugs. It makes nutrition. Uh, you know, there's so, the more we learn, the more we realize this is very important. Well, okay, so then how do we create a healthy profile with the microbiome? Right. We go into some of the more exotic treatments. Okay, we will. Let, let's start with maybe what's damaging it first, the mm -hmm. things we know that damage that gut flora and the microbiome. So bottle feeding, old age, as we age, we start losing our bugs. We get more bad bugs than good bugs. Pollution, radiation, medications, great number of studies on that, steroids in specific, uh, other disease process, alcohol, toxic chemicals, which that's a whole nother show, Regina, on the environmental toxins, and it is uh, unbelievable. Dental work, antibiotics really mess us up, stress for infection and diet. So what are some of the treatments? 
best ways is start looking, do you have a leaky gut? That means those little tight junctions that are supposed to be tight so we don't react to things. Um, they get damaged by stress, by all the other things that I was just talking about, and by food sensitivities. Those IgG delayed sensitivities. That is one of the most important tests I do with patients. I don't care what they're coming in for, what their pathology is, how, what, you know, what's, what their issue is. I know that I've got to see what are they putting in their mouth every day that may cause an inflammatory reaction. And that inflammation will upset this balance that we're talking about. So doing that blood draw for that IgG is very important. I can identify leaky gut from that, and I can identify, um, uh, there's other I secretory IgA test lets us know if we think we have leaky gut as well. Okay, so quick question on that then. With these IgG tests, it, you're testing more for kind of intake food allergies with that? And what your body has natural antibodies built up to and inflammation processes. How does that factor in, though, if you're swimming in a sea of toxic blood? They has to interface, right? That's, that's exactly right. So they cause an inflammatory reactions through a pathway that will eventually affect that whole flora, that whole gut microbiome that we're talking about. So if we have constant intake of something that's causing inflammation, that in the long run is going to affect that microbiome. But the secretory IgA test is a way, another way of looking for do we have leaky gut? Do you have that immune response going on? Then we know. Now you're reacting to things like gluten. It doesn't mean you're allergic. It just means those proteins that normally in a healthy gut that you wouldn't be reacting to, that you may be reacting now because it's getting across. Whereas in a normal healthy gut with those tight junctions, it's not. So these tests, the, the IgG and the IgA, are these commonly available? I, I don't hear anyone that goes through HMOs necessarily getting them. Do you have to find a naturopath or how do we go about that? Are they expensive? Oh. Functional medicine docs and naturopathic docs, those who are into holistic health, are know about and many are using these, this testing of IgG, the delayed sensitivities. If you go to an allergist, they're not going to do it. They do the skin pricks, they're looking for those immediate ones, but they are not generally going to be doing that IgG testing. Okay, um, so you'll be able to find it. You can go to the websites of the, the labs that do this and find doctors in, in, in their area. Um, but the IG, secretory IgA, again, that's commonly available and insurance may pay for it, but you've got to have a doc that knows to test for it and what to do with it when they do find it. So I think the issues here is when people start hearing that they have to have panels and tests, a lot of people don't have insurance that covers that kind of thing. So when we're looking at these tests, is it a fairly costly affair or does insurance pick it up? The good news is many insurance plans do pick this up. If the doctor gives the right diagnosis code and CPT code, then there's a, a chance for reimbursement. And so we're seeing more and more that insurance is picking this up. But if not, then your cost is probably between 300 and 600, depending on the doctor and what panel that they're looking at for the IgG, if we're looking at maybe 120 different foods. Okay, and I know a few people who have done this and they, with to good result, actually, and um, that you have to start cutting out. Once your panel comes back, there's no cheating, right? You, you have to cut those foods and irritants out. Well, and it depends on whether the patient's ready. If they have a wedding coming up or it's the holidays, I say don't set yourself up for failure. Wait afterwards. Then you're going to cut these out for 60 days. The reason why it's 60 days is red blood cells die in 60 days and you get a new one. So if the baby cell gets the same information, that inflammation from that food as the mama cell, it will act the same. We're trying to trick or fool the immune system into not reacting to these foods anymore. And we're healing up the gut wall lining at the same time. So now we're not reacting like we were. Okay. So what can we do in the interim? I, I assume that there are certain everyday practices that will help the health of the, the microbiome. That's correct. Well, reduce stress. 
That's you know, easier said than done, right? But good foods, uh, you know, our sauerkrauts, our yogurt, our tempeh, any of the kefirs, those kinds of things. Probiotics, great idea to do. Uh, there's a whole concept of prebiotic and probiotic. We won't get into the details, but working with a practitioner that knows that will help you. And if not anything else, start eating unsweetened yogurt and sauerkraut if you like it, that would be great. Balancing uh, the body in many ways. Um, miso soup is great. So go have fun and do that. And remembering the brain gut connection, I think Regina is another big piece that, that we wanna just quickly talk on, is that the neuro, 80% or 90% of your neurotransmitters, that's your brain chemistry, that is made in the gut. You will not think clearly. You cannot work clearly. You, it's that brain-gut connection, and it's a very big area of research now as well. So it's all connected. Heal the gut, heal the mind. Absolutely. That's the first thing I find. If I'm eating something that probably would show up as a positive on that panel, which I am going to have done, by the way, um, the first thing that goes is my brain. I have that brain fog. It, it, before any of the other physical symptoms happen, it's just that sluggishness. And I'm sure that most of the people watching this can relate to that. So I get what you're talking about. I think it's critical. We need our minds right now. We need our bodies right now. Any final thoughts? Just looking for leaky gut. Do we have that? We need to fix that up. There's specific supplements that help with that and really help you get to that faster. Otherwise, you're trying a lot of different things for your digestion. Digestive enzymes are great if you need them. They work. Probiotics can work, but if you've got leaky gut, you're going to be spinning around with a lot of different treatments and trying different things. You have to heal that up. I think that's an important point. Sunny, thanks so much. Uh, I think I'm certainly going to get that test at one point or another here. Um, it, it's, it's so critical that we start getting our energy back to contend with everything going on in our lives right now. So again, tell us where we can reach you, your website. DrWarden.com. So D-R-W-O-R-D-E-N.com. Thank you, Regina. Thank you so much. And to everybody, until next time, thank you for joining us here on ReginaMeredith.com.